Concerning the notion of person in theology, Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, person as relation. At the turn of the fifth century, Christian theology reached the point of being able to express in articulated concepts what is meant in the thesis. God is a being in three persons. In this context, theologians argued person must be understood as relation. According to Augustine and late patristic theology, the three persons that exist in God are in their nature relations. They are therefore not substances that stand next to each other, but they are real existing relations and nothing besides. I believe this idea of the late patristic period is very important. In God, person means relation. Relation, being related, is not something superadded to the person, but it is the person itself. In its nature, the person exists only as relation. Put more concretely, the first person does not generate in the sense that the act of generating a son is added to the already complete person, but the person is the deed of generating, of giving itself, of streaming itself forth. The person is identical with this act of self-donation. One could thus define the first person as self-donation in fruitful knowledge and love. It is not the one who gives himself in whom the act of self-donation is found, but it is this self-donation, pure reality of act an idea that appeared again in our century in modern physics is here anticipated, that there is pure act being. We know that in our century, the attempt has been made to reduce matter to a wave, to a pure act of streaming. What may be a questionable idea in the context of physics was asserted by theology in the 4th and 5th century about the persons in God, namely, that they are nothing but the act of relativity toward each other. In God, person is the pure relativity of being turned toward the other. It does not lie on the level of substance. The substance is one, but on the level of dialogical reality, of relativity toward the other. In this matter, Augustine could attempt, at least an outline, to show the interplay between threeness and unity by saying, for example, In Deo nihil secundum accidens dicitor, sed secundum substantiam, aut secundum relationem, in God there is nothing accidental, but only substance and relation. Relation is here recognized as a third specific fundamental category between substance and accident, the two great categorical forms of thought in antiquity. Again we encounter the Christian newness of the personalistic idea in all its sharpness and clarity, the contribution offered by faith to human thought becomes especially clear and palpable here. It was faith that gave birth to this idea of pure act, of pure relativity, which does not lie on the level of substance and does not touch or divide substance. And it was faith 
that thereby brought the personal phenomenon into view. We stand here at the point in which the speculative penetration of scripture, the assimilation of faith by humanity's own thought, seems to have reached its highest point. And yet we can notice with astonishment that the way back into scripture opens precisely here. For scripture has clearly brought out precisely this phenomenon of pure relativity as the nature of the person. The clearest case is Johannine theology. In Johannine theology we find, for example, the formula, the son cannot do anything of himself, 519. However, the same Christ who says this says, I and the Father are one, 1030. This means, precisely because he has nothing of himself alone, because he does not place himself as a delimited substance next to the Father, but exists in total relativity toward him, and constitutes nothing but relativity toward him that does not delimit a precinct of what is merely and properly its own. Precisely because of this they are one. This structure is in turn transferred, and here we have the transition to anthropology, to the disciples when Christ says, Without me, you can do nothing. 15.5 At the same time he prays that they may be one as we are one. 17.11 It is thus part of the existence even of the disciples that man does not posit the reservation of what is merely and properly his own does not strive to form the substance of the closed self, but enters into pure relativity toward the other and toward God. It is in this way that he truly comes to himself and into the fullness of his own, because he enters into unity with the one to whom he is related. I believe a profound illumination of God as well as man occurs here. The decisive illumination of what person must mean in terms of scripture, not a substance that closes itself in itself, but the phenomenon of complete relativity which is, of course, realized in its entirety only in the one who is God, but which indicates the direction of all personal being. The point is thus reached here at which there is a transition from the doctrine of God into Christology and into anthropology. In the doctrine of the Logos, the concept of the Word is applied to Jesus. John picks up a schema of theological thought that was extremely widespread in the Greek and Jewish world. Of course, he thereby adopts a whole series of contents that are already developed therein, and he applies them to Christ. However, there was a new element he introduced into the concept of the Logos. In important respects, what was decisive for him was not so much the idea of an eternal rationality as among the Greeks or whatever other speculation there may have been. What was decisive was much rather the relativity of existence which lies in the concept of the Logos. For again, the point is that a word 
is essentially from someone else and towards someone else. Word is existence that is completely path and openness. Some texts express this idea differently and clarify it. For instance, when Christ says, My teaching is not my teaching, 716. Augustine offers a marvelous commentary on this text by asking, Is this not a contradiction? It is either my teaching or not. He finds an answer in the statement, Christ's doctrine is he himself, and he himself is not his own, because his I exists entirely from the you. He goes on to say, Quid tam tuum quam tu, quid tam non tuum quam tu. What belongs to you as much as your I, and what belongs to you as little as your I? I is on the one hand what is most your own, and at the same time what you have least of yourself. It is most of all not your own, because it is only from the you that it can exist as an I in the first place. Let us summarize. In God there are three persons, which implies, according to the interpretation offered by theology, that persons are relations, pure relatedness. Although this is in the first place only a statement about the Trinity, it is at the same time the fundamental statement about what is at stake in the concept of person. It opens the concept of person into the human spirit and provides its foundation and origin. One final remark on this point. As already indicated, Augustine explicitly transposed this theological affirmation into anthropology by attempting to understand the human person as an image of the Trinity in terms of this idea of God. Unfortunately, however, he committed a decisive mistake here to which we will come back later. In his interpretation, he projected the divine persons into the interior life of the human person and affirmed that intrapsychic processes correspond to these persons. The person as a whole, by contrast, corresponds to the divine substance. As a result, the Trinitarian concept of person was no longer transferred to the human person in all its immediate impact. However, at present we can merely hint at this point. It will become clearer later.